Joining me now, Jason Helfstein, Internet Analyst at Oppenheimer. Jason, um, you know, I'm looking at the chart. I'm no chartist, but it seems like the question is, does it go back close to 150 where it was in late 2021 or closer to 100 where it was in March and April? What's, what's the key number or two from the report later today that that's going to determine which way it goes? Does it have to do with YouTube? Does it have to do with Google Cloud? I mean, I would say that the, the core advertising number is probably the most important, right? It drives most of the earnings of the company. We're looking for 4% growth. Um, you know, the general view is that advertising, you know, did not get worse in the quarter and should get marginally better in, in the next quarter. Um, you've also had cost cutting going on at the company. Um, they really don't give a lot of, of, of forward commentary. So it, it's, it's us analysts guessing, but we do think you should start to see margin flow through. And while there is a concern about AI's impact on margins, that's not going to happen yet. But I just wonder, is that enough? Is the core business performing to expectation enough to take it up to 145, 150 area? Or do they have to have one of those growth areas or one of those areas that have been shakier? Again, I'm going back to YouTube and Google Cloud sort of outperform perform well to show people, oh, well, it's not just Microsoft that can do well in this game and have a portfolio that performs in uh, uncertain times? Yeah, I, I mean, y you're not going to see AI in the numbers yet, right? I mean, uh, Microsoft will talk about Azure, but um, we don't think AI is doing anything right now for Bing. In fact, in June, Bing traffic was down month to month. So that should make people feel better about the, the impact on Google. We think their search traffic has been quite stable. There is a long-term margin question here. Um, you know, how dilutive is AI to margins? We have 4% CapEx growth for next year. That, that's probably too low. But the street, the buy side has particularly, you know, th there's just no, I, there's, a, there's a lot of confusion on where are margins in the back half of the year and concerns that margins actually go down next year. Now, so why, that, why is AI dilutive to margins? Just because you got to pay NVIDIA, uh, you know, on the uh, no, CapEx just, side in order just, to do yeah, it? or. Uh, Gen AI searches are more expensive to run uh -huh. uh, than a traditional search. Right now, we don't know what percent of Google searches will be Gen AI in the future versus a traditional search. And I think people have found that for most things they want to do, a traditional search actually today generates better results than a Gen AI search. That being said, uh, AI is going to be integrated in all parts of the business, in, in G Suite, um, and, and they're going to just have to you know, deal with that. They are trying to drive down costs, and I do think um, over the next 12 months, you're going to find that the cost to do this is going to get a lot less now, than what has been talked about before. Does that have to do with custom chips, right? Because uh, Amazon's talking about that. Microsoft's certainly doing it. So is Google. If their chips can reach a performance level where they don't have to buy as much from, say, NVIDIA, which we know because its stock price has gone way up, they're able to charge and get excellent margins. If they're able to do more in-house and vertically integrate, does that help the margins on the AI story? Maybe not within search itself immediately, but longer term. I, I think really it's about um, Alphabet using what they understand about all the information out there and actually shrinking the size of the data you have to look at to train and use AI. So when you have to understand everything that's ever been in the history of all time, that's quite expensive. If you can narrow that scope because you understand based on your existing businesses, your existing data, look, the user is probably just looking for an answer or a solution in this narrower set, that's much less expensive. But yes, I mean, Google keeps talking about, uh, you know, pushing out their depreciable life of, of their data centers. That's additive to margins. It's causing confusion about, you know, what the right number should be, but that's, that's additive to margins. And so we think that, you know, the longer AI is around, the more efficient it, it, it'll continue to get. And we think Google's going to talk about that this quarter. What does the street need to hear on costs? Um, expecting to see more cuts or just discipline in hiring or what? Uh, I mean, it's a little both. We have had kind of 4% this quarter. It was a 14% last quarter. We have it pretty flat the next few quarters. Um, and then kind of cost per employee, you know, was down 7% last quarter. And there's been a number of press reports of that trying to be more efficient with office space and, and, and other, other things. Um, that being said, you know, they've been trying not to fire people. So, you know, the question is with an improving ad market, which we think that's, you will see that in their numbers this quarter. 
can that flow to the bottom line? All right. We'll see what Ruth Porat and others have to say. Numbers break on CNBC in overtime. Jason Helfstein, thank you. Thank you.